those who have bad habits, shaitan on one hand comes and says, it's okay, don't worry. Sometimes shaitan even tells you, Allah is merciful. Do you know that? Shaitan sometimes comes to say the truth, but what he wants from it is some deviation. So he'll come and tell you, Allah is merciful. I know Allah is merciful. You know Allah is merciful. We all know that he is the most merciful. But when shaitan tells it to us, he wants us to continue in our bad ways with a false hope that, you know what? I can engage in sin because I'm dealing with someone who's the most merciful. So it becomes like a password into the sinful behavior where we just think, I'm going to say, oh Allah, forgive me. And because of his mercy, he's going to wipe it out. Therefore, let me engage in the sin. No, don't let shaitan entrap you in that way. This is what he does. He entraps us using good words. You know, when you're in a haram relationship and you're doing everything haram and the one thing you say, but she wakes me up for fajr every morning, you know. <laughs> yes, it happens. But you know, she's reminded me about the Quran and you know, he's made me a better Muslim. Those are the same excuses that people use that shaitan brings about in order to justify wrong or haram behavior. Yes, if there was nothing haram and if the behavior is permissible, you can say, mashallah, I appreciate what you're doing for me and so on. But we're talking of that which is wrong and we're using a password. You know, mashallah, tabarakallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. So Allah gives us opportunity to change and Allah gives us from his mercy moments that are different in value than the rest of the moments days that are different in spirituality from the rest of the days can you tell me which day of the week is the most blessed as muslims friday why why what's the reason anyone knows don't tell me we have french fries on that day no that's not the fry day we're talking about. Al Jumu'ah is the day of gathering, Jumu'ah and Jama'ah. We are gathering on that particular day. It is a blessed day. The true reason is simply because Allah chose it. That's the reason. If someone says, Why is Friday blessed? Say, Because Allah chose it. That's it. And if you go back to the hadith of the Prophet, ﷺ, he says, That is the best day that the sun has risen upon because that was the day Allah chose. And Allah's choice is unquestionable. Allah chose it to create Adam. He entered Jannah that day and so on. It's a beautiful day. The narration actually goes as far as saying, وَلَا تَقُومُ السَّاعَةُ إِلَّا فِي يَوْمِ الْجُمُعَةِ You know, the hour shall not happen except on the Friday. It's Allah who chose that. It's a blessed day. So don't we admit that a Friday is not equivalent to the other days. It is more blessed in a specific way. The same applies. The times of the day are not all equal. There is a specific time that is more blessed than the other times of the day. Who can tell me that time? Yes, what time of the day? Not a Friday, any day. What time of the day? Or let me word it differently. What time of the day or night is the most blessed? Someone says Fajr. Can someone else try? Yes? Someone says between Asr and Maghrib. Can someone else try? The last third of the night, subhanallah, from a specific angle, it is the most blessed. When you want to cry out to Allah, that is the moment. Do you know why? There is a guarantee when Allah is asking you, who is there, who is seeking my help, I can help. Who is seeking forgiveness, I will forgive. Who is repenting, I will accept. Who wants anything, I will give. What are we doing? What am I doing? Sleeping. May Allah forgive me and all of us. It's not haram because it's not, meaning it's not haram to be sleeping at that time because it's not compulsory to be up and engaged in worship at that time. But when you do and if you do, it is surely a sign of a few things. Number one is your closeness to Allah and your relationship with Him. You get to a level where you make it a habit. Maybe not every day, once a month. Is it difficult to get up for tahajjud once a month? No. When football is on, we're up. Subhanallah, not just once a month, but the whole season. 
We'll spend money and, and time, effort and energy. We'll go. The funny thing is, the day of football, I know of young people who've got up for tahajjud. For what? To make dua for their team. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. Imagine, it's happening, it's a reality. It goes to show that you actually believe in Allah. Imagine, even if you got up for tahajjud to make dua for your team, I might tell you the dua you were making was very petty, but one thing I know for sure, you believe in Allah. Do you get the point? Because you did, you did something that might have been petty, but you called out to the right one, the deity. No wonder your team keeps winning, mashallah. But the fact of it is, my brothers and sisters, we know that there is a time of that morning, the early hours of the morning or the last hours of the night. In, in the hadith, it's called thuluthul laylil akhir, the last third of the night, right? When Allah is calling out to you and I, and many times we're sleeping, I was saying, you're either close to Allah or it shows that you believe in Allah, at least. You know, if I were to call out to Allah, the fact that I'm making dua to him, supplicating unto him, already proves that I believe in him and his power and his ability. Isn't that a good thing? That's why the hadith says, Addu'a'u huwa al-ibadah. Supplicating, calling out to Allah is in actual fact worship of Allah. That is worship. That's the core of worship. And another narration says, مَن لَمْ يَسْأَلِ اللَّهَ يَغْضَبْ عَلَيْهِ Whoever doesn't ask Allah, Allah gets angry with that person. Angry meaning Allah is upset with that person. Subhanallah. Because you're not calling out to Allah at all. That's why every one of us has needs. Needs that we ourselves don't really trust our own ability and capacity in fulfilling. We ask Allah. Because Allah says, the moment we create that need in you and you've asked us, it proves that you believe in us. You believe in the super power of Allah. When I say superpower, I'm not talking of nations. I'm talking of the supreme deity. The one like whom is none. That is Allah. I've called out to him. So Allah gave us another opportunity every single day. But when you want something, you don't have to wait for a Friday. When you want to return to Allah and turn to him, you don't have to wait for a Friday. When you want to ask Allah, you don't have to wait for the time of tahajjud. You can start calling out now and when you get to the time of tahajjud, you can get up again and repeat the dua. Do you get my point? Same applies if a person wants to repent to Allah. Okay, you know, on Friday I'm going to actually... Uh, something just came to my mind, I'll share it with you, very interesting. Someone says on Friday, you know, I will call out to Allah, I'll repent to him on the Friday and it's Wednesday. Who knows you're going to make it? Can I give you an example? A true story happened in my community back at home. So there was a sister who, who accepted Islam and she was married. So she told her husband, she built the courage to tell her husband, you know what? I, I've reverted to Islam. I went to the masjid here. I've been going for a while. I've been looking at them and I really believe that whatever's going on is actually not true. And so I, I checked them out and I, I started studying and I found them to be absolutely correct and I decided that I'm going to embrace this faith. And so on Friday I went to the mosque and you know what? I changed my faith. I became a Muslim and, and that's what I'm letting you know that it's a faith. So the husband, uh, he was excited about it. Subhanallah. Unlike, uh, you know, people sometimes get angry, you know. He was excited. He says, oh, tell me more. Tell me more. I want to know. Uh, he was, uh, he belonged to another faith, right? And when she told this man more about it, he said, tell me about the beliefs, tell me about this. And they spoke for hours on end. And he says, you know what? I, I'm already part of this faith. I love it. I love what you're telling me. And I had a feeling too. And I'm part of it. So how do I, how do I actually go about it? So she said, well, you believe in it. You can say the Shahada. But on Friday, we're going to go to the mosque. And, because that was the day he had off. He, that was the day he was off work. So on Friday, we'll go to the mosque and we will actually get the imam to officiate this whole thing. And so she made him say the shahada between the two of them. You and I know that he's already a Muslim. And it so happened that on Thursday, this man passed away. He passed away. On that Thursday, he passed away before he went to the masjid. Now, on, on that Thursday, I was contacted to say, are we allowed to bury a person who's not even a Muslim in a Muslim cemetery? And I said, why would you ask the question? And so the people said, 
well, this man, we've known him to belong to a different faith. His wife is claiming that he's a Muslim. His wife is claiming that he's a Muslim. So I said, look, we need to verify. We need to find out. Let's get hold of the wife. Let's find out what the story is. And lo and behold, the story was told by one person, but exactly as I told it to you. Now, there is a difficulty because if you're a Muslim, the expenses to be buried, very little compared to if you're not, where you need so many things and so much. So sometimes some of the community members unfortunately think perhaps this person is lying that they're Muslim in order to cut the costs of burial. You see what I'm saying? But that's not it. I decided on that day that bury this brother, we will do the janazah, we will do whatever else and we bury him with the Muslimin. Because he's a Muslim. And I remember a few people started arguing with me, saying, you know what, no man, come on, you, we don't have witnesses. I said, that's enough. I'd rather make a mistake to bury someone who wasn't supposed to be in the Muslim graveyard with the Muslimin than to make the opposite mistake, where you, you, you're chasing away a person who was a Muslim and letting him go elsewhere. This was just the example. But the moral of this entire story was, look, don't wait for the Friday. You may not know whether you're going to make it or not. Here is a true story, and the brother didn't make it, but the good thing is, he already reverted to Islam prior to that. He had a valid excuse, because he had work and so on, but he did revert. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us success. Now, let's get to the point. So, the months that Allah has created, they're not all equal. One is greater in its value as a month than the others. Which is it? The month of Ramadan. In its value as a month. I'm wording this quite carefully, right? It is the highest of all of the other months in terms of the month, the whole month. There may be days. In fact, when it, when it comes to the nights, there is a night within that month that is the most blessed night without a doubt within the entire year. And what night is that? Laylatul Qadr. Okay. The same applies to places. Not every place is the same. The blessedness of Makkah and Medina is not equivalent to the blessedness of my home and yours or the masjid down the road. No. Those are far higher in value and so on. 